Hello everyone. For our today video, I'm going to talk about chapter 10, chemical bondings. In chemistry, we have two types of bonding. Sharing and transferring, they are nature of the bondings. Whenever electrons share between two non-metals, we call it covalent bond. And whenever electrons transfer from metals to non-metals, we call it ionic bond. So in chemistry, we have two types of bonds. Bonds in the chemistry classified by two groups, ionic bonds and covalent bonds. Covalent means non-metal, non-metal, and when we have a sharing between non-metals, non-metals, we call it covalent bond. Ionic bond, whenever we have metal and non-metals, whenever electrons transfer from metals to non-metals, we call it ionic bond. The compounds made by these bonds, we call them covalent compounds and ionic bonds, make ionic compounds. Covalent bonds make covalent compounds and ionic bonds make ionic compounds. For this chapter, we need to talk about Lewis structure. Lewis was one of the famous scientists and we have several theories in the chemistry by his name. And today we are going to talk about bonding theory of Lewis or Lewis theory or Lewis structure. So Lewis developed a model, we call it electron dot structure. In electron dot structure, we report valence electrons of atoms as a dot surrounding the symbol of elements. So we report, we draw dots around the chemical symbols. How many dots? The number of valence electrons. How to find out the number of valence electrons? We just need to take a look at the group number. Group number represent number of valence electrons. So we just need to memorize only this relationship. Number of valence electrons is same as group number. So whenever you are going to draw a dot, you should know how many valence electrons for atoms, and then you should draw the dot. Look at this example. Electron configuration of oxygen is like this one. If we have electron configuration, number of valence electrons is valence electrons placed in the last shell, highest shell number. Here, highest shell number is two. Number of electrons are placed in this shell number is six. So number of valence electrons for oxygen is six or you may say group number of oxygen is six both are same it depends on the valence electrons from the periodic table or valence electrons from the electron configuration both should be same lithium group number one so i draw one dot for lithium beryllium group number two two dots it doesn't matter where did you where you draw the dots for sites around the chemical symbol. So you just need to fill out each side. Bron three, carbon four. Whenever there is no more site, you just need to pair electrons. In this example, Lewis structure of oxygen, six valence electrons. So you just need to draw six valence electrons. One, two, three, four. Whenever four sites completely filled, you just need to add one and two to one of those sides so to pair them so in periodic table of elements we have eight groups so the maximum number of electrons we can draw around the central around the atom is eight eight dots two dots per each side for the new so maximum number of dots per side should be two Dots are usually filled singly first, then in pair. First we add one single electron in each side, then if we did, there is no more side available, we should pair them. One thing we need to know that in 
Lewis structure, we are going to make eight electrons for any elements. We call it octet rule. Or we are going to make eight electrons in valence shell. We have only one exception. We call it hydrogen exception. And your textbook, we call, it calls it duet rule. So you may think that hydrogen always make two electrons not eight electrons so you may call it duet rule but for all elements we call it octet rule i'm going to report phosphorus p five valence electrons so we should draw five if we are going to make any compounds with phosphorus so you know that we need to have three more so it means phosphorus can make three atoms can make a bond with three atoms one bond with the atom on the top one bond with the atom on the left and one bond on the atom on the bottom so we may have ph3 ph3 it means three hydrogens added to the phosphorus what does that mean let me work on this whenever we have covalent bond in the Lewis structure of that. If we have H2O, if we are going to report H2O, so you should draw O at the central atom because we have the smaller number of oxygen, smaller number of elements, we should draw it as a central atom and two hydrogen surrounded oxygen. Then you should draw Valence electrons for hydro, oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen group number six, we should draw six valence electrons. And hydrogen group number one, we should draw one valence electrons for hydrogen. Another hydrogen, one valence electrons. Then we just need to connect the single electrons. Connect the single electrons. If we connect the single electrons, we call them bonds. And we call them bonding electrons. So you may call them bonding pair electrons. There are different terms we may apply. If we do not use any bonds for these electrons, you see here, we call them non-bonding electrons, or you may call them lone pair electrons. So in this example for H2O, each line you make, we call them bonding electrons, or bonding pair, covalent electrons, covalent bonds. If we, there is no more bond, we call them non-bonding or lone pairs. So in this example, we have two lone pairs for oxygen and bonding electrons. Totally, we have four. Two here and two here. Totally four bonding electrons. Another example that I'm going to share with you is this form of H2O. Bonding electrons reported like this. So each bond means two electrons because we are connect two electrons. We are connect one single electron from this and one single electron from that. Lone pairs, one lone pair here, another lone pair, two lone pairs, and Two electrons are here, two electrons are here, totally four bonding electrons. Halogens like Cl2, whenever we are going to draw Cl2, I ask you to draw one Cl, one Cl, Cl group number seven, seven valence electrons for Cl. So you should draw seven valence electrons like this and just connect the single electrons. When you connect the single electrons, you make a bond. Here, I'm going to report the lone pairs. Two, four, six lone pairs for six electrons for the chlorine. It means three lone pairs for this chlorine. One bond here. It means two bonding electrons. And one, two, three lone pairs for this chlorine. So if you are asked how many lone pairs for chlorine atoms, lone pairs for chlorine atom, one lone pair, two lone pairs, three lone pairs. How many bonding electrons? 
two bonding electrons. If we are going to make hydrogen molecule, hydrogen group number one has one valence electrons. So you are going to make bond between the single electrons. So there is no lone pairs for hydrogen atoms, and we have two bonding electrons because of this bond for hydrogen. If we have multiple bonds, double bond or triple bond, we may have this relationship between them. If we have double bond, it means we have a stronger bond than single bond because we have two bonds. If we have triple bonds, we have three bonds. It means a stronger atom, a stronger bond than double and single, like nitrogen. If we are going to report in two, draw in two. I ask you to pause this video and draw in two. In two, we have two nitrogen. Group number five. It means we should draw five electrons around the nitrogen symbol. If you draw five nitrogen, so you should connect the single electrons. So you make three bonds here. We call them triple bonds. Whenever we have triple bond, it means two, four, six bonding electrons, and each nitrogen has one lone pair, two non-bonding electrons. Whenever we are going to work on compounds, we are able to categorize compounds is in two different groups, polar or non-polar compounds. Before talking about polar or non-polar compounds, I have to define one concept in the chemistry. We call it electronegativity. Electronegativity is ability of an element to attract electrons in a covalent bond. What does that mean? In this example, if we have nitrogen, nitrogen, we are going to see which of these elements can attract these bonding electrons to each other more than another. This nitrogen can attract electrons more to left side or this nitrogen. There is no difference between nitrogen. So there is no difference in attraction. So both are same. Whenever both are same, there is no difference. We call it nonpolar. If we have different atom, one hydrogen, one chlorine, it means one of the elements attract electrons more than another. Hydrogen or chlorine, different atoms. So at that time, we may say chlorine attracts electrons more than hydrogen. So at that time, we say we have polar compounds. So whenever you have same element, you should say non-polar because there is no difference between them. We have one table that we should work on this table in our class to know which one can attract electron more than another one. Assume that I told you HCl. We have one number for elements. H has 2.1, chlorine has 3. The larger number, it means they attract electron more. Between H and Cl, Cl attracts electron more. So we say polar polar bond. If we have two nitrogens, N and N, both are same. There is no difference, and that is why we can we call it nonpolar. So I have a simple definition. If if we have two atoms, both are same, are identical. CLCL. CL. There is no difference between them. We cannot say this chlorine attracts electron more than this. So we call them nonpolar compound. Sorry, nonpolar bond. If we have different atoms, H and CL, at that time one of those attracts electron more. So at that time we say polar bond. So polar bond. How to find out this information for our chemistry labs? In chemistry labs, we have some compound dissolved in another compound. And some compound cannot be dissolved in another one. They are not dissolved in another one. It depends on the polarity. If we have polar compounds, they dissolve polar compounds. If we have nonpolar, they dissolve nonpolar. 
So we have one rule in the chemistry. Like dissolves like. What does that mean? It means we have polar dissolves only polar. Nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. Let me give you one example. If you add oil to water, oil remains on the top of water and cannot be dissolved in water. It means one of these two is polar, another is nonpolar. And this is the example that you may work on this. How to find out in our class polar or nonpolar compound? If this is a basic rule, if your central atom, central atom of your compound has lone pair, we call it polar compound. If the central atom of your compound has lone pair, it doesn't matter, one lone pair, two lone pairs, more, we call it polar compound. So, in chemistry, we have one theory, we call it VSEPR theory, valence shell electron pair repulsion. In this theory, we are going to report our compounds by correct and accurate molecular shape or geometry. In our class, we work on molecular geometry, and we are going to know what is the shape of this compound. If I say H2O, if I say CO2, what is the molecular geometry or shape of them? To do this, you just need to look at the central atom and look at the table that I am going to explain for you. At that time, you are able to explain everything based on that table. If your central atom bonded to two atoms like this, there is no lone pair here, only two atoms, the bond angle it looks 180. 180. And we call it molecular shape is linear. Molecular shape is linear. So, like this one, I'm going to ask you to work on this table. This table given to you for your exam. So, if you see one compound, the central atom has two bonded atom and no lone pair, you should say the molecular geometry is linear. If you have three bonded atoms, and no lone pair, we call it trigonal planar. Example for this. Look at the central atom for this. It bonded to three atoms. One, two, three. Three atoms. No lone pair for this. So, we call it trigonal planar. If we have two bonded atoms and one lone pair, look, the central atom, only central atom, only central atom determines the molecular shape. The central atom here is S. It has one lone pair, one lone pair, and bonded to two atoms, one atom oxygen, another atom oxygen. It doesn't matter we have what type of bond, double bond or single bond. I didn't talk about bond. I talk about bonded atoms. So one atom here, one atom here, totally two atoms. Two atoms, one lone pair. Two atoms, one lone pair, you should call it bent. Same scenario. If you have the central atom, no lone pair, and four bonded atoms. Four bonded, no lone pair. We call it tetrahedral. If you have NH3, let's look at the central atom. Three bonded atoms and one lone pair three bonded and one lone pair. The molecular geometry we call it trigonal pyramidal. And last one, we have the central atom. It has two lone pairs and bonded by two atoms. Two atoms and two lone pair. We call it bends. So there are some information you should know for the Lewis structure of atom in chapter 10. We have more practice in our class. Thank you for watching this video as well. Enjoy your rest of the day. Bye-bye.